Good morning from Yami B TV, and as promised, in the house with me today, all the way from Ireland, um, Dublin. No, no, no. <laughs> County Mayo, Bill Mullet. Big up, Bill Mullet. Bill Mullet. Uncle George Devlin is in the house, and he tells Uncle Yami and Yami B TV and all of you his story today. All right. Nice to see you, Uncle George. And you, Samson. Nice Love. Love. He's been with me for he's been with me for about three years since the journey started, and we've got a lot of things in common as well as coming from the same area and round about the same school. Uh, but our paths did not cross in the young days. So, George, we'll take it all the way. Might as well start. Well, start. should we start from where we first got in contact? John Connolly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just explain to the viewers, because John Connolly... Yeah, John... The Kilburn, sorry, Kilburn, the lot. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. lot have been waiting as well for this. Jo John Connolly, fellow that we all went to school with, in, we went to Quinton, Quinton, didn't we? Quinton Kenneth. Yeah, so yeah. You, you would have been... I was in the third year in Quinton when you started in Quinton. Right. Because Quinton was a boys' school. Wow. That... And then when it got to the third year, the first year was mixed. So I, I got there as it changed. As it changed, yeah. Because I went in the first year, we was, we was all it mixed. It was all boys and girls, but before that, it was just boys. But John Connolly, a little bit of background on him, because he wasn't in your year, he was in my sister's year. He was the year above me. Yeah, John Connolly would be in the middle of us. So yeah. you're, how old are you now? Um, 50 something. 50 what? I don't know yet. Yeah, all right. I'll I did, right I did a joke, Sam. So, well, right I'm not ashamed to say I'm 60. All right, right? He's 60. Yeah. so he's older than me. But, yeah. Um, the great John Connolly. But Con better looking, eh? Let's put it out there for a vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uncle George. So, John Connolly, interesting, right? He was in. When I was playing for all the school football teams, remember we had Richard Cadet, I had Mark Steen, you remember? <coughs> we had all those geezers that went on to play professionally. Um, with me playing on the left wing, and then, then we was a forward line, right? But John Connolly in the Sunday League, I think it was either Barnet District or Highgate Rules in Hampstead, right? Which is not far from Quinton and Keniston. He had a funny hand, but he used to play the same position as me from that school. So he'd be substitute, I'd be substitute. It'd be that kind of thing. And then years later, when I, my, my, my journey sadly unfolded with institutional prison stays, um, John Connolly was serving a life sentence. Yeah, John so I knew him from school, but when he got to Ellsbury, he was there. But that's, that's how me and you, you yeah. got onto me because you saw a podcast and me. Yeah, said, I like, asked John you, didn't I, one day about John? John you Connolly. Went, and then the same school, and then we messaged afterwards, yeah. and there were so many people that we knew and, you know, didn't know. But John Connolly, he's dead now, by the way, God rest him. Rest in peace. Yeah, he, um, his dodgy hand was he was, he was sniffing glue. Right. And he hit, got hit by a train, I think, at Swiss Cottage. I, got heard, yeah, yes, I yeah. remember that, George. And then, then um, I was amazed when he got a life sentence because uh, apparently, as the story goes, his mum's boyfriend was beating her up. Right. And John went and uh, bashed him up in the flat by all accounts. And Taplo, by Swiss Cottage swimming pool. By that, I know where the Lego land is. Yeah, but is. apparently he... Um, Stuffed a sock down his throat and bashed him with a monkey wrench. And he joked and, and got, died. And I saw him in Elstree on that And he got, he got life. But, you know, and I used to... I never went to visit John, but I'd always... There was, there was guys that went to school with him yeah. that were really good with him. And they yeah. visited him throughout all of his sentence. And I heard afterwards that he went funny with all them. That's what prison does, do I? It, this is a lot of thing, yeah? There's a lot of people out there that have backed prisoners. Yeah that have visited prisoners, yeah. that have sent them in money, that have looked after them, that have, you know, done mm. their bits for mm. them. Mm. And unfortunately, some people have come out and they've forgotten already. You, you know, it, that's, know. that has to be a big shout out there to all the people that visit people and I, keep I their head done, right. I just done a video this morning, George. Did you? So about the other side of the coin with um, the Dear John letters and obviously I plead guilty to leading someone on or at the time. I thought I was saying all the right things, only never not to fulfil my promise. It's amazing how we did, we, all the ones that did good for us. I've, I've worked it out in later. Like, yeah. Like, did good. You'd return and you come out and you go back to the people that didn't, didn't want any good for you. It was bad, didn't it? And it, then you work it all out that they were just trying because they could see things clearer yeah. than we could at that stage. But yeah, George, so the John Connolly thing, you was around Quinton. Yeah. At my prime, so around about yeah, that time. That's so right. we know a lot of the same. And then I, I used to hang around with, do you remember Isidore Johnson? He was in my seat, the big geezer. Big geezer. He, he, he was massive, man. Yeah. yeah. One of the favourites at school, but he was old, he was about your year. He's like, no, he was my year. Yeah, yeah, I used to go to yeah. school with him. Yeah. And, and he, he tragically, I, I, did, I didn't, I did, when we left school, I didn't see him. Then the next time I've seen him, right, I'm walking up Kilburn High Road, I'm about 18, 19. Mm. 
You know the size of him, yeah. yeah. He's come up and he's cuddling me and kissing me. And I go, fuck off, fuck off, everyone's yeah. looking. He goes, what, you won't kiss your old pal? And he started hugging me. I loved his little, yeah. yeah? Gentle child. Beautiful man, yeah? yeah? And then the next thing I'm reading in the sun, newspaper a couple of years later, I think he was in his early 20s, he got stabbed to death at his own engagement party. Where was this, George? In Luton. It happened in Luton. How long ago? Well, this would have been... It must have been the 80s, no. Did he die young? He yeah, he did die young. He, apparently, uh, what he that? said, that there was a fight and he was escorting someone out of the party yeah. and the bloke stabbed him. Now, oh. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but that's what I read, yeah? Because I actually tried to go to the funeral and I mm. tried to get... But then, because it was a murder thing, no one would give you any information no. of where... No. The, do you know what I mean? And yeah. it was, yeah. But Isidore was... So many people, right? Mm. That you hear that we went to school with Samson that are now dead. I know. It's crazy, man. I know. I don't, you know. Oh, so George leading on, right? right. Lead to sad bits too late. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to all sad all the way through. The, um, so growing up in Kilburn and school, early life, family, brothers, sisters, mum yeah, and dad. Yeah, I've got brother, sister, after school, mum and dad. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I, I am. Um, I didn't live live with my parents uh, after I was 17. I li lived on my own, really. But that wasn't no sad story. No. What it was, they actually um, worked behind the bar. That was their, you know, running pubs and clubs. Yeah. And they actually went down to um, run a club called the Cobden Club. Where? In Labrook Grove, right. off Kensal Road. Yeah. But, it, but it, was a, uh, it was like a proper old white villains club. Right. Okay. Every year when the carnival would be on, the windows used to get smashed because they wouldn't let any black people in. Called them Benedict. Yeah, oh yeah, that was back in the day. Yeah, the, the, mm. but the Cobden Club years ago was a working man's club. It's like you you talk about um, Dave Smith. Dave Smith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Roger Vincent's cold. Well, yeah. Dave Smith's mum and dad used to drink in the club that my mum and dad run. I knew his mum and dad, lovely people, John and Pam, they were, they were nice people. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and a lot of faces that get mentioned used to drink in the Cobden Club. But see, when, when I was 17, they took over the job and they had living accommodation yeah. supplied with the job. Yeah. So I stayed in their flat, yeah. in the council flat, because yeah. Yeah, they didn't know how long the job would last for, but the job lasted eight years. Yeah. You know? It's like so you get all the accommodation for that. You get the accommod you live above it. Right, you know, but mm. they had to keep their flat just in case the job didn't last ten minutes. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's a good deal. I, I would so mm. I now my brother lived down there and my sister lived there. I think my brother was mates with Dave Smith. I don't know if he still is to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, okay. But one thing I have to my son got in a bit of trouble years back and when he was on remand the first person to come up to him was dave smith yeah just as, just uh yeah. yeah so dave if you see this thanks for that i didn't really mm. know you but thanks for what you it should, it should be not long out yeah i call dave i mean dave smith yeah they're they're, mm. they're finishing off yeah Mimi, they? Mimi was quite close dave as well good fella loved by probably a lot of people yeah like Phil yeah Curry, Phil Curry, the prison officer but he's on my mind oh yeah the fella how's he, he doing just, now he's, he's all right he's all right but he like dave smith i think they're in they might still be in contact Right. Because they, they had that little thing. I think um, Dave was training to be a personal thing. He'd done his... And he, he had this, dyslexic, didn't it, Phil? And Dave, Dave had ways. He used to write everything backwards, didn't he? So much for... There was always ways around. I remember it was you, Phil. Uh, explain that to me about even though you're dyslexic and blah, blah, blah. There's ways of... That's how I learned a bit more about dyslexia through um, Dave. And he, he, he passed all these things with flying colours. That club was a mad mm. place, mate. Fights, you want to see the fights in the Cobden Club back in the mm. day. They would kill each other, right? And I mean, I've seen doors come off. I've seen... Do you remember any names of the faces that used to go down there? Um, John John Stokes, no? No, I remember Barry Murphy. Um, yeah. I've, I've seen Ray Hill mention him. Barry Murphy was a nice fella, man. I, I like Barry. Yeah. I he's still out there. I, yeah. I, but I'd know people. That skinny old Neil and all that, they were all used to go down there. And that other geezer, John A, what's his name? John Alter. John Alter, he was a big name down in Labrador. Yeah. Uh, and the Buckinghams as well. And, and a fella that, uh, there was, what was the other ones? There was other families there. That, um, yeah, go on, George. I can't, I can't remember. They will, they will come to me, but I used to just go there now yeah. and again. But my, like, that's probably how my brother knew Dave, because when they were younger, yeah. he'd, he'd go with his mum and dad, and yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And whatever. And then um, after that then, so then I started getting into lorries, tipper lorries. That, tipper lorries? Yeah, so they're the ones that go into sites, pick up the muck, yeah? Yeah. So you know when you go in and the machines load them and they take that away... That was your work, was that your work, George? Yeah, but, I, but I, was, I was always naughty with them, man. 
Explain the tipper thing, because I don't think... So, all right, so a tipper lorry, yes, basically... Me, no, no, you, you, uh, Samson, you've been well, in jail for 40 well, fucking but, years, do you know what I mean? Unless you, you passed yourself wind, you wouldn't have a clue, would it? Into it, I might, it might, Yeah, so yeah. if you go into a building site now and they're taking away stuff, a machine mm, will load it into the back of a lorry, yeah. he'll go and he tips it up and gets rid of it. That's, well, I've that, seen that. that's yeah. a tipper lorry, yeah. yeah? But back in the day, there used to be a lot of fly tipping. So what it'd be, you'd pay me to take the muck away, yeah? Yeah. And I'm meant to bring it to a place and pay to tip it. Right. Well, didn't really happen that often, Samson, to be honest with you. Do you know what I mean? It, like the, back in the day, when you had a tipper lorry and you were fly tipping, it was better than robbing a bank and it was better than selling drugs. What, money-wise? Money-wise. And risk-wise was... Not now, it's all changed. Right. Yeah? But back then, <coughs> you could go... Draw a load of muck, tip it left, right and centre and go and get paid on a Friday. I can remember one of my mates from Dublin, right? When you, when the Euros was on, when Ireland done well in the 90s, they, they yeah. got to the top. I'm not really into football, but they got to the top eight or the top whatever, yeah? yeah? And that was a, either with Jack Charlton or... That's it, Jack Charlton. Jack Charlton, Charlton. Yeah, Charlton yeah, yeah. the World Cup. Okay, yeah, and and the, like, I've always been around the Dublin boys right, and had the crack right, of them, yeah? Right. Okay, and how I got to know them was... Before I bought my first lorry, I was minicabbing at night in a place in um, Kilburn, a minicab office, and half of them that were on the run, yeah, from Dublin, were mm. fucking minicabbing out of this place. And you get to meet them, and you and I've been friends with some of them boys right up to this day, day yeah. Because okay. Kilburn's quicker with loads of Irish, isn't it, when we was growing up? Kil Kilburn was, what do you call it? But I, I can remember, right, just to finish on this story, I remember one day pulling up, right, the DOB club in Kilburn, Gone in, I wasn't drinking, I had my lorry with me, but I still needed to get rid of my load of muck yeah. that was on the back. Yeah, okay, so I watched the match, had the crack with the lads, and I said to one of the boys, and he was serving up, sell, selling a bit of gear. We're not going to mm. mention any names, no, right, no, okay, no. but he, he'll know when he sees, right? Mm. And I said to him, come on, come with me. I said, I'm coming to tip, tip this load of muck. And he went to me, you're, you're such a cheeky fucker with that lorry, he said. I'm not going with you, he said. You're fucking mad, he said. Everyone can see what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. He said, you're going to come to a sticky end. What, so it wasn't criminal, the tipping lorry? It wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't criminal then, it's then. criminal now. Yeah, yeah, but what in, in that way then, when he says that? Yeah, because I was breaking the law, really. So I was it just, is a yeah, lawbreaker. Yeah, so what I was doing, like, you'd go and see an empty site, yeah? Yeah. Or a, a demolition site, and they'd be off site. You'd cut the lock off the gate, and you'd go and tip your muck in there. Right. And put your own lock on the gate, and it, like sometimes they would last. The shoots would last. Sometimes you wouldn't fill them. It was it was hit. You could get caught any time. But when so you, he threw the mockers on you by you, saying, "No, you no, he, he, no, he and, he had the bottle to go selling a bit of gear, gear, but he didn't have the bottle to sit in the passenger seat of my lorry. It's yeah, madness. okay, he's crazy. And he went to me, "You're going to come to a sticky end." Yeah. The next time I saw him was in the special unit in Mount Joy. Because he had been on the run, the next thing then he gets nicked in Kilburn and he gets brought back to Ireland. Sod's law. Right, sod's law. And then I've gone over to see him, yeah, and I've gone in, and in the special unit in Mount Joy, yeah, you go through the things, like it was back then, you go through your normal bit, then you get in a minibus that goes deeper into the prison. And then there's about eight, just a visit in for about eight people with a screen so in the middle. It's a, it's a, it must have been it's a, a special unit yeah, inside special, a prison. Special unit, yeah. Oh, so we was he, he, well, we, we fit in. So did it, did it ever come and go go wrong for you with a tipping thing? Oh yeah, loads of fucking times. No, Explain oh, sorry. What happened then, George? Well, it went horribly wrong one time for me. Yeah, and I was in big trouble. As in, I set up a company, right? My sense of humour, yeah. My, my sense of humour is brutal. Yeah, right? it can be either. Yeah, best. you know, people say these are their best weapons. That could be... Your tongue can get you in trouble. Exactly your tongue can get you say. out of trouble, yeah. yeah. Anyway, me and my infinite wisdom, I set up a company called the Flying Squad Limited. Right. Right? Just taking the piss out of the old build, a yeah. flying squad. And so then I had, a, I had a few lorries and we, we were dumping muck everywhere, right? People are like Catholics, right? I'm not religious, yeah. but a Catholic will give up something for Lent. That's 40 days before Easter Sunday. Yeah. So you'd give up sweets, you'd give up this, you'd give up that, yeah? We give up going to the proper tip for Lent with the lorries. Yeah. Well, I just act in the bollocks, really, yeah? And anyway, it proper came on top, yeah? 
I was given 45 summonses. They seized my lorry. I was given 45 summonses and one week to fill out the paperwork right. of these summonses. Even though it was a limited company, if, the, if I didn't have the paperwork, yeah, I was getting a five grand fine times 45. Wow. That comes to a lot of money, yeah? But hey-ho, there was a bit of uh, divine intervention, yeah? Because I was very unfortunate, yeah? So I've been given all these summonses, yeah? Been given a week to fill it out. And you'll never guess what happened, Samson. My office got broke into, yeah? And all the paperwork that they wanted got stolen. My God. Wasn't that's, that sad? That's a right result. Well, no, well obviously. <laughs> I'm not complaining, do you know no. what I mean? And uh, the next thing then, uh, so I was given a week to fill out all these. My office got broken into. Uh, all their paperwork got stolen. I'm, I remember it so well. Do you, do you know where um, Thingies is? Um, the Westfield, have you seen that? The yeah, shopping Shepherd's centre Bush. in Shepherd's yeah, Bush. Yeah. Well, that used to be just yards where people would have, like, so you might have a few lorries, you'd have that bit of a yard. You Like, you you lot would class a yard as your home, wouldn't yeah. you? Some people go, yeah, that, but uh, us men in construction, Fashion a yard is, is where you keep, keep all your stuff. Keep all your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I, I I had a yard in Shepherd's Bush oh, for 20-odd years on and off in, in this lorry park. It used to be a lorry park, and then it was sectioned into yards. And my uh, they would give me a, a week to fill out the paperwork, the lads come into work on the Tuesday morning. They've rung me. We've been broken into. I said, we'll ring the police. And when I went down there, there used to be an advert on telly, like the yellow pages, you know, when the bloke yeah. went, I don't, you don't, you know, when someone's room was untidy, that advert on the yellow pages, and they said, don't go in there, you've been burgled. But someone, it was about getting a cleaner. You probably won't remember that advert on telly. Yeah. But it was a bit like that. The cop was outside and he's gone to me. Mate, he said, I hate this. He said, uh, don't go in there, your office has been wrecked. Right? And I felt like saying, yeah, I know, that's how I left it. <laughs> right, okay, right. So I've gone in there, next thing he's gone, what What was stolen? Everything that I needed, Samson, for this other crowd. Yeah. I was going, that was nicked, that was nicked. He said, well, how come they nicked all your paperwork? But that was back in the day when you had a fax and a, and a computer. Oh, I said, okay. they've took all my paperwork, I can't even give you the number of my thing. And I go, oh yeah, that explains it. Uh, don't touch anything, we're going to fingerprint the place. Two hours later, they run me back and said, we're not going to fingerprint it. Here's your crime reference number. That's all you needed. That's all I needed, right? I left it till the Friday, because the bloke, the following Friday, gave me a week, yeah, to fill out the summonses. Rung him up, and I said, all right. He said, yeah. He said, are you outside? I said, no, I've got a bit of bad news for you. What? I said, I've been burgled. What do you mean you've been burgled? I said... All my gear was stolen, I said, Monday and all that. This is the crime reference number, right? So you think, fuck, you know, we'll see how this goes, yeah? About three weeks, month later, got a letter through. Um, this happened on this day, that happened on that day. Um, now I advise you to get legal advice and come up for a taped interview. Yeah. And I rung the fella up and I said, the word on the... Um, Letter is invite, innit? You invite yeah. me up. And I, and I went, no thanks, and put the phone down. And I've never heard from that man till, from that day till this. After that then, I got rid of my lorries. I went to, on a cruise with my ex-wife to the Bahamas, yeah? So, but the case, George? That was it. That was the end of the case. They got sung out. There was nothing, no. Because you can't defend this. Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the, yeah. the paperwork was gone. Yeah, the paperwork was gone. So I knew then. So it was a close call for you. Oh, very close. I've, I've come I've come close a couple right, of times, Samson. After yeah, that, yeah. So. Uh, when was another time I come? No, when, forget that, forget oh, that George. Oh. What, you're just going to go talk about something else. You went away, you went on. Oh, yes, I went to, oh, yeah, I went to the Bahamas. Yeah. And me being me and my sense of humour, the fella that had been nicking me yeah. and, and everything else, yeah, in the environment agency, I sent him a postcard. From me, from the Bahamas. Ha, ha, ha. No, glad you're not here. Oh, you know the way people go, yeah. wish you were here. Yeah, 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 glad you're not here. But I heard afterwards that uh, someone that knew him, that I met and later on in life, said that mm. when he got that per postcard, he just burst out laughing. Yeah. What, what else can you do? Do you know what I mean? You so win some, you lose some. You win yeah. some, you lose some. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've had... Um, I've had my son he, he, years ago. He, he um, two fellas tried to rob him of a car, of his car. There was an incident. There was a fight. Uh, the boy died. God rest the boy. I'm not going to mention names. No, no. Yeah. Okay. 
my son went to court, got found not guilty of murder, guilty of manslaughter with provocation. So he went to prison? Yeah, he got, he got four and a half years. Manslaughter? Uh, yeah, and done two years. So I know, even though I've never been to jail, I know what it's like to have a family Is this member. your firstborn? Yeah, Lord. yeah, my son, yeah, yeah. How old was he when that happened? He was 18. And you was living in Kilburn at that time? No, living in Dunstable in Bedfordshire. Living in Dunstable yeah. in Bedfordshire. Yeah, Kilburn yeah. Kilburn Bean, you lot, yeah. I was um, living there. And it, what's his name again? And I, this is another mad one, you know. I, I can remember. So you was visiting your son? No, no, I want to tell you about when you he went. So, so he gets arrested. I mean, it's very easy to talk about it now because, but the whole year while he was on, I got, he got bail. Yeah, he got bail. The whole year while he was on bail, you just didn't know how it was going to go. You just didn't know how the trial. I knew it wasn't murder, but as long as the jury realised it. Any, any, was he the only one involved in the case or was there more? No, there was a, there was a couple of there was a couple of lads, and you know something, the madness of the the lad that actually started. Now both boys were fighting with my son. Yeah. But the boy that actually started it, he's gone scot free. So he's he started it. His mates got wrapped up with him, yeah. and his mates died. But his mate wasn't the one that started it. It was the and you know who you are, yeah. But it's no point in mentioning no, no. names. You know what I mean? Historic. It's it's historic yeah. and. It's mad how things goes. I mean, like I was 60 the other week, yeah? Yeah. So I had a party. The last time I had a party was when I was 40. And that's when my son was um, a, a, on bail for oh, murder, yeah. yeah? And I'm going down to Kilburn. I'm living in Dunstable. I'm going down to Kilburn at half seven on a Friday night for a bit of a drink and a get together for my 40th. And my ex-wife said to me, as we got on the M1 at Junction 9, just chat, yeah? Uh, oh, you'll always remember your fortieth because of because of my son being on bail for murder, oh, right? Nice. I've yeah. gone to her at Junction Nine, Samson, right? Ah, don't worry about it. I said, you know, be all right. Nothing else can happen. I've got as far as Junction Six on the M1, and I've got a policeman ring me up from Collindale. This is fact, yeah. Uh, you need you need to surrender yourself to us, um, and that was over uh, buying two council flats and getting discount for the pair of them. So you know, years ago, if you bought a flat. Yeah. You so my first wife, we were always falling out. So she had the flat before me, so we bought that and got discount. How many children did you have for your first wife? So just one. The son. Yeah, just my son, yeah, just my son. Yeah. Right, go on. So we my my first wife was ten years older than me. Right. Sarah, <clears throat> my new wife, is ten years younger than me. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's one extreme to the other, isn't it? Do you know? So, uh, yeah. At least you've done a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what what's happened is I just hit junction six of the M1 and the policeman goes, I need you to surrender yourself. Because what had happened was, I, I'd i split up with her and I'd got another flat off the council. Mm. And then of course, I've ended up buying the two of them and getting discount off the pair of them. Right. Right? Which is a no-no. You're, you're only allowed to do it with one. Right. Okay. And the next thing, well that cover, he was all right because I went with him, Listen, mate, it's half seven on a Friday night. Have you got my date of birth? I said, I, and he went to me, I'm not that type of police officer. He said, uh, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I told you to surrender yourself next week. He said, I'm going to ring you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your night out. So he, he was all right. Do you know what I mean? So it went to court, George? No, it went to court, yeah. Uh, my son, he, got, he went to court, got found not guilty of murder, guilty of manslaughter right. and provocation, yeah. This was on the December 2003. Wow. I'm up in court in January 2004 for obtaining property by deception. That was the charge. Wow. As in buying the two. So he went to prison in December. Yeah. And it looked like in the January that if it was gone wrong for me, I was going to jail. Okay. It's mad how when you reflect back, do you know what I mean? And I've gone up into to court in the January. And I'll tell you, any of you boys in England that are looking for a barrister, Marion Smullen, she's got her own chambers. Shit, Marion, you are the business. He went, where's she from? She, she's, um, she's got her own chambers in uh, Temple. Oh, yeah, Temple. In, in, down in are. Temple, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely woman, Marion. She defended my son. So you got off that again? You got she, she got, yeah, she, she got me off on a, on a legal argument. Call him Benny, Benny Cupper. All right, so I've had my touches, but then having said that, You'd think, oh, I bought two flats or whatever. Then it all went wrong. I had no luck for it. Do you know what I mean? Go on. Yeah. Then, then what happened after that then 
Uh, I had a skip business, put my heart into it. Everything, I had a few properties, had this idea in my head, this is the way forward and ended up losing everything. Explain. Uh, I invested in a business that I thought was the business. Everything said it was a great idea. It was a new kind of concept with skips. It was like transit vans that could lift builder skips. Yeah. It, you don't understand the industry, so it's no. hard to explain it to yeah, you. But yeah. And spent a fortune, was really doing well, getting it just right. And then the next thing, the recession kicked in in 2008. So this, quite, this feels like recent times. Too. Yeah, and, and the recession. And you're still with your first wife at this time? Still with my first wife. Who's the provider out there? She oh, had a great lifestyle. Yeah, oh, yeah. She was oh, buying yeah. all the Gucci bags. Well, and no, she was, in all fairness, she was never really into that, but she, right. she, there was always plenty happening. I mean, at one stage there, I had two Jeeps, private number plates, 39, uh, 31 GD, 29. I thought it was a pop star, so I thought it was a way So she was living the life of Riley. Oh, everyone was in my house. Everyone got looked after. And then... The recession? The recession, and then it turned, and then I'd remortgage to put it into the business, and I ended up losing the lot. I ended up that my own house that I was living in, that I had a mortgage on, I knew I couldn't pay the mortgage, and I just gave it back to the mortgage people. But what happened to her? Uh, we, what happened then was. Don't tell me she left a sinking ship. Oh, yeah, gone, mate. Oh, no. But that's, listen, it's like. We, we, we spoke earlier, yeah? And I'd like to say this to a lot of people. If you can be really down, I, I got really down. Not, mm. not depressed, because I've always had a sense of humour no. and I've always, no. yeah, I never get depression. I'm blessed. I've, I've never suffered with it. I've, mm. I've kept going. And sometimes you have to lose it all to get it all. Yeah. I mean, I've, we've spoke, Samson, right? And about you when you come out and, you know, what, what I always say to you, get your house right. Make sure you keep your rent. Get, have your base. Yeah. Okay. Because that is your foundation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And your foundation, you have to get, but I've always been kind of lucky. E yep. Even the day, the day I decided, right, I am going to give this house back to the mortgage. Yeah, people, because I know I can't pay for it. Interest rates have gone high. I've stopped earning. Yeah, and, but Uncle George, the, 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 the situation there. Yeah, son, first wife, blah de blah blah. As soon as the recession, you're doing it. You've got you know taking it away from everything. Him. Everything's like gone. Job, <clears throat> like Job in the Bible, interesting. That he took it all away from him. Those that don't know, and then he got it all back in later life. But George, so when with the missus, the wife, because very important. Yeah. Um. So that when did it? Start backing down it, it, from it, that. It just, yeah, it, it just all went wrong anyway. It just, it was, it, it, it just. No went, love there, really, apart from. Nah, that, not so. really. When, when I look back on it, you know, it, not really. But it's, there's no point in. It, you know, it is what it is, Samson. I heard a rumor that you, um, you went to the the battered husbands. If you're not laughing. Yeah, no. But I don't oh, know if that was a joke. I don't know if it's a joke. Nah, or not. They, they, I told him that was Uncle George. Right. So during the relationship with during because it was a bit wife. volatile. Yeah. Um, this was back in the day. This is how I ended up getting my own council mm. flat, yeah? And it was all about if you were gay and this, which is nothing wrong if they were getting their rights, yeah? So I thought, I'll jump on the bandwagon. And I've gone up to the council offices and I've said, I'm a battered husband. Yeah. Right, the old woman's knocking me about and all mm. this, right? And the next thing, oh, what a crack I had, Samson, mm. right? There was, the, ran, did you know Agamemnon Road round behind West Hampstead Police Station? Agamemnon Road. Of course I remember that. Agamemnon. You would, you would I remember. Play on Quicks Road, didn't I, for the five, five or so. Yeah, but Agamemnon, there was a little Agamemnon. park up there, you know, up by the Prince There was a king called Agamemnon. Was there? He was a Greek, um, I think, not a god, a Greek myth called King Agamemnon. I think it was the island of Crete where the war was at. But anyway, go on. But king I've, 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 gone in, I've gone into the, I've mm. gone into the council mm. and I've said I'm a battered husband and I'm, I'm pulling, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing, she's gone upstairs, the woman, and uh, you remember Tarba that we went to school with? Yeah. Tarba, yeah, rest in peace, she Tarba. She took care of me when I was a little boy, man. To anyone that knows that? Tarba, what she was... So she was at school with us, she was in... She, the... she was in school, well, but Tarba worked... I should mention her. Man. Yeah, she worked, she worked in the council. Yeah, I think I remember vaguely. Yeah, and mm. so I'm, I'm, I'm there, and then the next thing, Tarba's come, ah, oh, George, give me a nice hug, remembered yeah, me did. from school. Tarba yeah. was lovely, man. Well, she, was, she was really nice. I know. But I haven't told her I'm lying. 
No, no. I've, I've told her. Don't need to be yeah, yeah, I've said it's a it. Yeah, 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 and she's gone. Oh, so he I've, wasn't actually getting battered, but no, nah, no, nah, I just said that, didn't I? I pulled a move, yeah. But it, this was near the end of the relation. No, nah, no, nah, this, no. this was this was in the middle of it. <laughs> so I, I've said that, and then they they've decided then that they're going to put me in this hostel till they give me a flat. Okay. So they give me accommodation then and there, right? Wow. And I, I've gone round. I didn't know they stuck up for geezers back yeah, in the day. Yeah, right. I've gone round there, Samson, and the mm. bloke has gone to me, an Indian guy, right, nice fella. He mm. said. Uh, I'll tell you what we do, he said. Let me have a look what rooms I've got. But it was a battered red. There was only me and a gay geezer in there. The rest was all battered women. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I've gone around there, he said, right, let me see what uh, rooms I've got and I'll tell you what one I'm going to give you. Yeah? And me being cheeky, I went, I've got a better idea. I said, why don't you show me what rooms you've got and I'll tell you what one I'll have. Right? And he just burst out laughing at me. Mm. Yeah? Got on. So he's given me this room and he said, right, he said, what we do... He said, every morning, we, we give you tea and toast, and we all meet in the communal room, yeah? Oh, and we all we all chat about our, our problems, oh, yeah? Oh. So I thought, I'm going to have to crack it, yeah? So I've got, gone in this room the next morning, and people were there, and they are all introduced themselves. And I said, yeah, I'm George from Kilburn. I said, uh, my wife had a serious drink problem. I said, you know, I knew there was a problem when I looked in the fridge, and there was one bottle of milk and five bottles of wine. Right, and they're going, yeah, yeah. Next thing this woman pipes up, she went, I know your wife. Have you got a boy that goes to Quex Road School? I've gone, yeah, like that. Right, I've got to keep going now. Yeah, I've gone, yeah, yeah. She went, I never knew your wife was like that. I went, just goes to show you. Oh, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I <laughs> just left it like that. And I ended up then getting a, a two-bedroom flat about three months later in Crickwood in Besson Road, off Claremont Road, where Hampstead School is. So staying with the missus still? No, no, I, I went, uh, no, we were separated then. We separated for oh. a good while, and then we got back. And then when we got back, I made my sister a joint tenant on my flat in Crickwood. I forgot about it. I was giving my sister the flat. Gotcha. Years later... We've bought Kilburn, everything's good, things are going well with George. And the next thing, my sister's gonna do a runner with rent arrears, and I went, no, don't do that. I'll pay the rent arrears, and I bought that flat. Oh, well. and, then, and then I had a fella in Kilburn grasp me up, a fella that was meant to be real sound, bang on, rang me, I was a manager of a company, you got a job, George? Yeah, yeah, I said, uh, I'll give you a job. The company that I was a manager of, Skip Company, yep, yeah, give you a job. Oh, I've just gotta find somewhere to live now. I said, as it happens, I've got a little flat. I said, I've graft you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling a move here, I said. If anyone so was this during the time when you, you dropped down or was it just building up? Or this, was is this, build, this is building up. Back this up is, or that, at no, the beginning of it when you're building? Yeah, this is, the, oh, this is my start, journey. This, yeah, yeah, right, this right. Is, so I said to him, look, I'm uh, buying this flat. I'm pulling a move, yeah? If anyone asks, I'm living there with you. Do you know what I mean? Because I was living in Kilburn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sweet, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him in. Let him in to cover the rent. Two years later, I buy the flat. But what happened was, they spent two years investigating me to see could I buy it. Right. They knew there was something not right, but they couldn't put their finger on it. So then they sold it to me. Then the fellow that was renting it, I said, look, I, I own it now. I said, um, I'm going to get someone else in. You get another. T so basically, he, he was renting it for 70 quid a week, what the rent was. Right. Yeah. When I bought it, I said, right. I'm going to now charge 150 a week rent. Not to you, for two people. I'm going to get someone else in. You get them in if you want. They pay a one-off for one room, and your room gets reduced to 50 because yeah. you're sharing. But you can pick someone to come in the room with you. He, went to, he didn't think I owned it, and he went to the council and grasped me up. And then they spent another two years investigating me. That's how it took four years. So, to rewind, so you got, when everything went downhill, Right, she started to, so you was potless. Yeah, so things it. then, it, when the recession come in, and the, the lost, lost everything, relationship went. But like I said, being lucky, the day I decided that I'm going to get rid of my house, yeah. my neighbour in the same estate that I lived in, an Indian guy, rung me and said, all right, George, how are you getting on, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm going from here. I said, I'm, yeah. I've got to find somewhere else to live. He turns around, he said, well, I've just put a bid in on a three bedroom semi detached house around the corner, you can rent that off me if you want. Another result. And not just it touch lucky, you know, unlucky in a lot of things, Words, yeah. yeah. I can honestly say that in my 40s was the mm. worst years of my life. 
hell. Where everything was going against me, everything went wrong. But when in the 90s, I'd done the knowledge, you know, for the black cabs. Yeah. So I could always fall fall back on that, drive a black yeah. cab, yeah? And then I got, I got so, it got down so much that all I was earning, what I was taking that day in the yeah. cab, yeah? Mm. And then, then I, I, I'm there, I'm on my own for about 18 months, but, and then I, that's when I changed my name to uh, Nothing Left. That's when you put the, the thing Yeah, you put that thing up before. Oh, oh George, what about, you, you involved in criminality though, your, your brother? Yeah, Sammy, my, my, Jordan, what about the faces from way back in the day? You must remember a few. Oh, of them. I do remember them, and I'd know of them and know them to see. My brother would have known no, them. Lot, lot, yeah, he would have yeah. known them all and yeah. been with them. But yeah. I, um, he was in and out of prison all yeah. his life. Um, I don't know what he's doing now. I, 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 last I heard, he was driving a lorry and things were good. So you was visiting. So you went to visit. You visit the English shows, then. You yeah, I've visit, experiences. Oh you? yeah, I, I, um, I've actually been in on the wing in Penterville. Yeah, because when I had my lorry years ago, I went right. in. I went in there to work, and I think that's when they were putting the toilets in, yeah. and the site, the whole side was closed off. And a bloke on site brought me in and brought me down the wing, and I could go in the cells and read all the writing. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then um, I'd done work in scrubs. Right. Yeah, in, in the car park in scrubs, and I remember being in there one day. Funny enough, I had two lorries, and my brother was driving the other one. And we're waiting to go in, you know, get your turn yeah. to go in and out and all that. And he went, God, this is fucking, it's all right for us. He said, we can go in and out, yeah? All we like. About a month later, we got remanded there. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's just mad how it goes. But I remember going in there one day. They must, did they bring you across the, the yard to go to the block? Yep. Right. In scrubs. In scrubs, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Because I remember one day we were in there and the next thing, first thing they said, don't stand by the windows. Yeah. Someone will throw a parcel on you. Yeah. yeah, be careful of that. So that was the first I knew of shit parcels and yeah. through that, you know. Yeah, right? before the toilets. And, and then I remember one day they said, stop the machine, stop this. I don't know who this fella was, man. He was like a man mountain, yeah. And they must have been bringing him across to the block. They had him handcuffed up. It's like a big looking Greek geezer with big fucking long. He looked a fucking handful, yeah? He was handcuffed up, right, Samson? Loads of screws around him and the dog walked Sounds in. Sounds like George Constantine. Oh, it, 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 I don't know who he, but he was, he yeah, oh yeah, and they walked him across. And then the funniest jail I've ever been in uh, was Holloway. Go on. The woman's prison. Yeah. So I've gone in there to pick up a machine with what they called a low loader, which is a long lorry mm. that they put the machine on the back to transport them, yeah, mm. okay? Well, the lorry was so long, you know the way you go into the prison and they close one door, door. and then they open the yeah. other door? The lorry was so long that when it went up to the front door, they couldn't close the back door. Yeah. So they had to get a load of screws to go round it, yeah, and uh, stand round it. Mm. But by the time we've got in, we then had to park up for two hours because everyone was going to court. So right. yeah, I, I, I see all that, how the sweat boxes were all lined up or whatever, yeah? But we've got in there, Samson, so we pulled the lorry up and then people were starting to walk around. This woman came walking towards me and my mate here. We're standing there with a prison officer. She had ulcers hanging off her, man. Whatever was going and she looked like she would fight anybody, yeah? And the screw went, see this woman coming here? I said, she's the hardest one in the jail. My mate that was with me shit himself and like he went back in the lorry, sat in the lorry. Then the next thing, the women were coming with their tops all undone and all that. It was, it was just a mad place to see. Just, you know, I've, I've always visited prisons. I've visited people in Mount Joy, Castle Ray, Bristol, Rochester. All the London jails, Maidstone. So when so to, then move, so then right, everything falls foul. You want a mm. new start. Um, you meet your Sarah, 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 yeah, Sarah, Sarah, yeah, and you move to Ireland. Well, yeah, we got together. Then we were over there a year, year and a half. Uh, she got a transfer with her job to Ireland, which made it all possible. We moved over to Belmullet, and we both love it. But they're mad over there, Samson. Right? Okay, I've got to tell you, yeah, I got nicked over there. Yeah. Okay, I used to love the weed, yeah? yeah. I don't touch it now, but no. I, used, I used to love it, yeah? yeah. I, I was like a white raster. I was yeah. out for fucking decades. So I know when, but I could always function with it. 
Yeah. I could be having a spliff 11, 12 at night, get up at six in the morning, go and drive a lorry. It was, it was kind of like a bit of a, a sedative, do you know what I mean, mm. yeah? And then I get nicked over in Ireland. So I've, I've started cleaning chimneys, right? I get nicked, I'm about six months doing the job. Um, I get caught with two ounces of weed in the van, yeah. right? But I was lucky, yeah, because I was growing a bit. I've got sheds where I am, mm. right? So a fella, basically what happened was a fella come to me and he said, look, you, you smoke, I smoke. Um, I know how to grow it, are you game? Well, of course I'm fucking game, do you know what I mean, yeah, okay? And we're growing a bit just for our up for our own selves. Yeah. So I ended up falling out with him because he was like fucking a bit of a dickhead, right? Okay, that's yeah. You know you are, Stephen. You're a cock, right? Okay. And uh, so I fucked him off. He had a couple of tents in his shed. I had a couple of tents in mine. You know, just little grow tents. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I've gone to buy the last weed that I'm ever going to buy. Okay, and I must have been seen buying it. No one knew where I was going to get it, but I got it. And I, on my on my way back into Belmullet, yeah, okay, I see two guards come, and you know, you know when they look at you, and you just know it's on top. Yeah. So I've seen them come towards me, and they, and I think, nah, you're paranoid, you fucker. This is a, you, you get talking to yourself, don't you? I carry on driving down the road. <laughs> Next thing, they're all around me. Get out of your van, get out of your van, we're searching your van for drugs. I said, crack on. But I had the, the weed that I bought in an envelope. Mm. And the guard comes in the front, he said, what's that? I said, oh, that's money off jobs and try to bluff it and put it in my pocket. So he went to me, uh, let's count it. I said, not really, it's two ounces of herbal cannabis. Okay. But when they go back to my house, yeah, they don't search my sheds. Oh, so the plants right. I've got going, they don't cop that, yeah? Okay, so that's okay. They give me my van back, let me out that night, and uh, I then they then they get hold of my phone. They say you're a drug dealer. I said I'm no drug dealer, which I was never a drug no. dealer. I was a puffer. There's a difference. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I said I'm no drug dealer, but the bloke that was growing with me used to send me messages on Messenger, and I got lazy. I told him not to do it, and I got lazy, and I asked him back. So I've gone straight round his house and said, look, there's messages between us. Be careful. Geezer fucking just fucked me off like I was a fucking idiot, yeah? Like, thought he'd ignore me. I go home, I get rid of my grow, I get rid of everything. Within two days, I've completely tidied up my act, yeah? And I've made that decision then, I'm jacking in the weed because yeah. it's, it's on top now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? Two weeks later, they raid his house, they raid my house. He's got all his growing gear set up. He's got everything set in the room because he thinks he's so arrogant. I'm from round here. They won't think that of me. Oh, it does now. Yeah. This, he goes to court, right? Let me tell you what this fella's like, right? He goes to court and he says, I met Mr. Devlin at a play, which he did. Yeah. He said he made me grow cannabis. Oh, he made oh. me smoke cannabis. What a wuss. This is a 40-year-old man. And what happened, George? So what happened was, in, in Ireland, you get a squeeze. If, if you've got no convictions and something happens, you can get what they call a strikeout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I never heard of it till I went to Ireland, yeah? So what's happened is, he's got a call. He's trying to blame me for everything as any... It, I would be known as a blow-in. Even though my mum was from Belmullet, and I'm, I'm a blow-in because mm. I've lived somewhere else and I've come in. It's, it's a terminology, yeah, it's what you call it. So he thought that me being the blow-in and him being local, he could slag the life out of me and I'd get the blame for everything, okay? But he mugged himself off. He's gone to court, he said oh, he done me the best favour ever. He got caught, so the original charges I had, they raided my house, they said that I had 8,000 euros worth of drugs in my, it wasn't. It was, you know, when you're growing a plant and you finish growing the mm. plant and you throw it out in your stash, uh, mm. like your compost heap, mm. yeah, okay? They, they found all uh, dead plants there. They tried to say that was 8,000 euros worth of drugs. It went to court and it said, dead plants of the cannabis gene, no value. So that was that charge out the window. Cultivating cannabis and two ounces of weed in the van. And I'll tell you another thing, lads, yeah? Do you know who pays the most money for their drugs in Ireland? 
the guards. Do you know why? Because they're the ones that, I get snicked, right? For two ounces of weed that I give 600 euros for. Do you know what the value they put in the papers? A thousand euros. I went round there, right, to the guard station afterwards, and I went to, what's all this in the paper? Blah, blah, blah. Let's keep it fucking real, yeah? And then I went to him, I don't know who you boys are buying your drugs off, I said, but you're paying way too much money for it, I said. A thousand euros, you're getting tucked right up. Because they put mental to make it look... So you bit... did, so you did, what was the punishment? For so the, the punishment, oh yeah, the punishment <clears throat> for the two ounces of cultivating cannabis. He got up in court, he turned around and said that he had gone to Hope House, which was a rehab. Mm. He was an accountant, he said, um, he had two charges, cultivating cannabis and 4,000 euros worth, but he was the same as me, dead plants. Mm. So that, that charge was mm. gone, yeah? And he said, uh, I want to be an account, carry on being an accountant. He said, uh, if I pay money to charity, I've been to Hope House, which is rehab for a week, yeah? And the judge said, okay, pay money to charity, come back in a few months, and if you're not before the courts, you get a strike out, okay? Now bear in mind, he slagged the life out of me. I then get up in the dock, and what I didn't tell anyone, when I got nicked, see, this is another thing I always advise people. A lot of people get arrested, right? The minute you get nicked, you have to work on your defence the minute you're nicked. Mm. I.e., when I got nicked, I decided, that's it, I'm not smoking any more weed. And I done seven monthly drug tests with the doctor. Right. And never said nothing to no one, right? So you had that preparation. I had the, I had the preparation mm. done, yeah? Mm. So he said his bit, got in the call. I've gone up and said, well, look, basically I said, I fell off a lorry when I was in my early 20s. I said, uh, I smoked a bit of cannabis for pain relief and I was smoking it ever since you're on until I got nicked, yeah? But now that's the straw that broke the camel's back. I've jacked it in. Here's my seven monthly drug tests, mm -hmm. right? And this mm -hmm. judge went, oh. <clears throat> Like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, she looked at the seven. So that was in the December. She turned around and said to me, okay, Mr. Devlin, um, I'd like you to do two more drug tests, one in January, one in February. Come before the court in May, uh, in March. And if all's good, I'm recommending you get the same as the last fella. Right. Which was a strikeout. So what I'd done that day when I left the court, I went and done another drug test. Mm. So I'd done one in the December, January, and the February, mm. paid 500 euros to charity before I went to court. Mm. And when I went up in court, I got a different judge and she wasn't happy with me oh, getting no. a strike out. And she just went to me, she went, you're a lucky man, Mr. Devlin. I don't want to go against the other judge, but I'm not going to go, but I'll give you a strike out. And mm. she was pretty good looking, this judge, right? And I was pretty, I was tempted to say, you're a bit of a looker yourself, Your Honour. I'll remember your face, because you kept saying, I'll remember your face if you come again, but I kept my mouth shut. And I so, got a striker. Right, George. So the, the, the Mountjoy, what were the three prisons you spoke about you visited in Ireland? Uh, Mountjoy, <coughs> Castlereagh, and Hort Leash. Right. Um, any stories from up there, from those Irish prisons? Because we were talking earlier about... Oh, I yeah. Uh, the scrubs, I was remembering the Yeah, scrubs, the scrubs. I well, uh, I, re I remember a fella, uh, he's from where I am, and mm. people are going to be asking me around there on it. And he was a prison officer. And years ago, I knew his brother, and he said to me, he said, oh, like, you you know all the Dublin boys in Kilburn. He said, I got on really well with all of them, yeah? And I said, oh, yeah. He said, mention me. He said, feel free. So I've gone to a party with the Dublin lads a few months later. I said, do you lot know so-and-so? Next thing they've gone to me, he was a kicker. Oh, no. Right? Oh, yeah. Explain. Right, I'll explain what no. a kicker is. Now, I didn't know what a kicker was. Apparently in the 90s, and some of the Irish boys here might be able to answer that about kickers, what they were, if you played up right. and you were a prisoner, at, in the evening, four or five police, uh, prison officers would go into their locker room, they'd put overalls on, they'd put a balaclava on, and they would come into your cell and kick fuck out of you. That's what he's saying. Hence, hence the name, the kicker. And he didn't have a clue, this fella, that everyone knew he was a kicker. Stupid idiot. Stupid idiot. It's letting everyone know you've, been, you've got that kind of history. You've, you've got that kind of history, yeah? Mm. And, and, uh, and, the, and I said, how do you... Then they explained to me, the cleaners or someone would be out on the wing and they'd see the prison officers going in to get dressed up before they went in and battered someone. That's what he said, Dean Scrubs. They Did all it? got nicked way back in the 90s. Mental, wasn't it? So yeah. how did, did it come on top for him? 
No, he's, no. He, he's a sad old man now. He he's a sad old man, and I actually mm. seen him walking around the town a few months ago, and I just loved him. I, I didn't tell anyone his history, because he's a fucking sad old man, do you know what I mean? So that's the term where the kickers come that's from. That's where the kickers come from, yeah. Right, so, all right, that's explained, George. George, so what about um, the, the boxer that was in the cat? Oh, uh, Thomas Mullins. Mm. Well, I, I remember, I didn't know Thomas, but I knew his brother very well, mm. John. They called him the bullet. Because yeah. Thomas is called the boxer, boxer and his brother John is called the bullet. That's right. And I don't know why he's called the bullet, but when a man has a nickname, the bullet, you don't ask him, do you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, he would be around with the crew that I would have been around with. And I'll tell you where he got arrested from. Um, do you know the top of West Hampstead, West End Lane? Yeah. Where it goes onto the Finchley Road? Yeah. There used to be a safety deposit centre beside there. Yep. Yeah. That's where he got caught coming out. That's the one that Vici robbed before he'd done Coots and Co and Night Springe. Yeah, because they had four. Robbed that one. That was near St. John's Wood. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, but there was one in St. John's, John's Wood. Wood. There was one in Finchley Road. Road. That's near Swiss Cottage. That's, that's right. They, they, they were all the down. same the same yeah. crowd, them safety. Well, yeah. that's where he got caught coming out of when he got originally his 18 years. Was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he'd yeah, gone he to that in, safety yeah. deposit centre. Yeah, because he was in London. He had to go to court in London. Oh, mm. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's where he originally... And then, funny enough, I knew then his brother for the first few years, and my brother had been sent to jail, and whenever we'd meet in each other, he'd say, how's your brother getting on? I'd say, how's your brother? You know what I mean? Mm. And then I, I, I haven't met him, his brother, for years and years. Mm. And then the last I heard of uh, the boxer was when my son was in prison. Right. And um, he was telling me, oh, there was a fella got released this weekend, Dad. Did you know him? And I, oh, I said, the boxer. But... I wouldn't have known him, but I could have told my son to mention a couple of names and then he'd have gone, yeah, there's a connection here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, he, he, he was well respected, you know, the boxer. Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and not in... Um, God, time flies. Not, not in, mm. not in um, scared terms. People respected him because he, no, no, he could have yeah. a tear no, up. Just very, up and down. And just a straight fella. Yeah, yeah very right. So, George, in Ireland then, what about... So, the Irish, you bet the three other prisoners, any more stories there or...? It's happy ever after. Go on, good afternoon, uh, sir. Well, good morning. Oh, no, good afternoon. Yeah, man. no, um, mm. funny enough, the fellow I saw in Mount Joy that I said in the secure mm. unit, he's coming to see me now in a couple of weeks. He's got out. He's all straight now. He's been. Spencer's got a parole hearing. Well, you, you talk about Spencer. Mm. We, we, I've got a mate, Anthony. He must be out by next year, Spencer. He, he's, he went to school with Spencer. Mm. One of my very good friends went to school with Spencer, Anthony Murphy. Yeah, and, and he um, you, went you, to school in Ireland or no? Here, yeah, he, he, he went. He went to school in Luton. 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 That's yeah, right. Yeah. He was from Luton originally, mm. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. And you took. There's another fella, Anthony, that I can remember when my son was up in um, Luton Crown Court. Yeah. And about two days before the trial starts, Anthony rings me and he said, "Right, George," he said, "There's a pub beside the um, there's a pub right beside the Crown Court." Right. He said. You park your car in there every day, he said. The landlord's a friend of mine, he said, for the whole of the trial, park the car there and you just walk across with your family to the thing. So there was none of that in the mornings. Where do we park? Where do we... Have? I was always... Things would always... Fall into place. Fall, fall into place. But I always kept, you know... And then, like I said, I changed my name, didn't I? Remember as we put that up? Yeah. Oh, what a crack I had with that, man. Oh, George, what, so... I oh, know, yeah, that was good. That was good. I saw my community page there. Oh, you George, so happily ever after with Sarah? Oh, yeah, me and Sarah get on well, man. So yeah. you got on there all the way down, all the way back up. We, we, yeah, we, well, it's, listen, there's, there's... Better than England, George. Oh, oh, ten times better, man, ten times. It's the sense of humour mm. there. That, I mean, I've got a 1967 Ford Anglia, yeah. right? I've always wanted one, yeah, okay? And I've got one now. And that's the car in the Harry Potter films, yeah? yeah. You know, the, the kids' films, and they make yeah, it fly, yeah? yeah? Because I've got Nick for the weed over there, yeah, I've only bought this Anglia, I must have had it 10 minutes. You know the nickname they put on me then? Harry Potted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh yeah, they're, they're fucking bro. I've got my teeth done, as everyone knows, anyway, in Turkey, yeah? Of course I could get mine done soon. 
you know what they were calling me around the town? Shergar. You remember that horse yeah, that got nicked? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not was that one up there, was it? Oh, yeah, no, no, that, they kidnapped, oh, that they kidnapped the horse, but it was, it was in England. Was it in England? Oh, I'm no, not sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they yeah. so that few of the lads were calling me Shergar after I had my teeth done. Right, oh, oh, the sense of humour is, and that launched my chimney. I, I clean chimneys, yeah, okay. Yeah, what now? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I've been doing the last few years, and that's what launched my business. Getting nicked for the weed over there changed everything. No, because everyone's so nosy. Yeah, they want to meet you. Who's this fella that's just been nicked? And then me have a chance with them, get the crack. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's not a big city where you are then? No, no, it's, it, it's a small town. It, it, it's, I, yesterday, mm. or Wednesday, when I come over, was the first time I've seen a traffic light in months. Because I had to drive... I'm in Belmullet, which is up right up in the northwest coast. It's the nearest town to America on Irish soil near enough. Yeah? And is it, it, how's that? How, oh, and, but it's, dead, it. it's, it's like a dead end, yeah. right? You, the, the one thing about Bell Mullet is you, you've got a drive, there's one road in and one road, road out. out. Yeah, so there's very little crime. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's a, it's a very, it's a great place to grow old in. It's a great place to, um, it's a great town. I, nice I love the town and, and, and the people are just different class, the sense of humour. I mean, yeah. my days, right, I'll go out and clean the chimney. Yeah, okay. Uh, then you've got to sit down. Then you've got to have the cup of tea. You could go out hungry every day, Samson, and you will come home full. Yeah. It's, it's a different way of life. I've seen more cars yesterday driving around with a few of my mates having yeah. looks, looking at bits and pieces. I saw more cars yesterday than I've seen in eight, mi eight years of living in Belmont. Good on Bennett. It's so, every journey takes this, but it's not, I'm making it sound like Father Ted, yeah? It's not, No. there's plenty of life goes on there, there's plenty of crack goes on there, and it is a brilliant place to live. It's actually a bit of history. Black Sod Bay, which is just down from Belmullet, that's where they had the, light, um, the weather station that gave the, the weather for the D-Day landings back in the day. Did they? Yeah, so, but when they decided to start World War II right. and la launch the D-Day landings, it was the weather report from Black Sod that they were going to go one day and they got a weather report from Black Sod Lighthouse. No, no, it's too rough. Or we go the next day. But no one knew this till Freedom of Information in the 50s and the 60s or Come whatever. On. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a great place. I'm happy where I am now. I'm happy where I'm in life. We probably could have touched on, on a lot more prison bits and bits and pieces. Yeah, but mm, what, what about you, got loads yeah. of, I'll be over there soon. I'll yeah, to one Samson, when you come over, over you will see. I've done Wales and Scotland, and I've never done that. Oh no, I, I did Wales when I was a little boy. Yeah. I've done Wales, Scotland, yeah, Ireland, Patrick, Mole. I've got loads of. Yeah, because you said if you, well, if you, I'll be interviewing all of you. If guys, you find I'll go out, around some of my followers, you know, if you find out there, where all the lads are, more practice for me. Yeah, you're presenting. If you find out where all the lads are in Ireland, I'll work out an itinerary for you. Yeah. I.e., it might be you might be better off flying into Knock Airport where I where I am. Yeah. Have a couple of days with me, and then I'll drop you at someone Some else. Things. Someone, exactly. and we'll work it out between oh, us. Stuff, do, do, do you know what I mean? And so, George, that, um, good, good stuff, George. I know it's nice of you to get down here as well. You don't miss England now. We've Not a chance, man. Dreary, it's dreary, Last yeah. night, right, I'm looking on, on the telly, yeah. I'm sitting in the hotel room, yeah. and there's nothing but crime programs. Following this police force, yeah. following yeah. that yeah. police yeah. force, following the murder squad, yeah. following the thing. Yeah. It's crazy. You can learn more. You learn more um, growing up. Remember when we were younger, we did have no insight into how all, all of it works. Um, police, the criminal things, all the, all these things that they show on TV now, I believe, gives criminals a better advantage and more it's information. It's showing them. Because you could, you could learn how to swerve things before you actually make the mistakes that we had to do because we didn't have all that, this kind of social media and all this um, new technical stuff and insight into every single aspect of the procedure of how it works. You, so they've got a head start, really. You know what I mean? It's like, I know a lot, a lot of lads as well, right? You, it's people see people and they see them get nicked and they, and they think, oh, they never covered their money. Mm. They've never known no different. Different, yeah. I know lads that used to sell bags of weed, mm. little 20 bags, 30 yeah. bags, that are now fucking big, massive players, right? Mm. And they've just gone from the natural progression, sure. right? I had, I had a young fella years ago, right? And he, he said to me, I, I, I want to tidy up my money, George. What's mm. your advice? 
I said, but, so I said to him, you need to kind of basically make a moody company up. Mm. And you need to make out that you're doing work for people. Mm. Then that way you can bank your money. I'm not going to go into details no, of what no. I said to him. You, yeah. you can bank your money. I said, then what you do is you pay a bit of tax on that money and then you've got clean money. Do you know what he said to me? I ain't fucking paying no tax. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it's cr and like, Greedy bastard. That's what it... But they, don't give some back, Samson, man. they don't understand. Yeah. It's like you, yeah? How many, don't pay at the end of the How day. many it's years were you in prison? Right. Quite a few. Right, years. okay. Mm. No matter how you played up, no matter what mm. you done, yeah, okay, you always got clothed and you always got fed. Correct? I know. You could act the bollocks. You could serve it's someone up on the way. Everything was done Everything was done done me no favours, though, in later life. Because when I'm... When I'm oh, go on, You've come it. out, right? You've come out right now. Mm. Paying rent and paying bills is, like, totally new. Let's be honest. It's mm. not... Do you know what I mean? Is yeah. that so, no, it's very serious. You know, it's, you, yeah. you, you, and if you went now to visit someone in prison mm. and you had to leave your home at a certain time and it's two hours there before you get on the mm. visit, mm. then it's all the nonsense going through to the visiting room. Then you might mm. go and meet someone that's got the right ump because you ain't done something. I know. Do you know what I mean? You'd see the different side to it. That's The people that have stood by people, they should get a mention too. 100%. You said that. And George, yeah. you know, I was thinking, that's definitely right, because having to learn to do things for myself, as well as the injuries and yeah, the yeah. processing and up and down time, I've had to bump into things and I've, it's got to happen to me a few times before it registers what, you know, what my priority is that I should be getting right first to make sure that your own house is in order. These, when you're institutionalised and it's been done the way that George has explained it for a lifetime, like... Those things are so important when you come out, man. I wish that we would, someone would have explained it properly to me. Like, I've always been on the edge. You've got your rent page, Samson. You've got, you got, you got, you got this. You've got, you yeah. got to have that right, you mm -hmm. know. When you get your money, go and buy all your toiletries. Go and buy all your food. I still managed to get looked. In a way, you've got to be honest, you've got to still managed to get looked after and people doing things for me but or showing me um, when I wouldn't have, it would have taken me too long to work out myself, to be honest. And then, you, then you're stuck and you're all of this. Fuck, it's strange. It is, isn't it? It's, the rubber it, of green helps. Of course it is, you know. George, and it's, George, it's absolutely um, brilliant for you to have come down. Um, I was a bit gazy this morning, man. I swear to God. Man. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting too, I'm getting more healthy as the day. Anyway, gone. Samson, I just want to give you one bit of advice. Go yeah, on, tell me. You're declaring now of your new love on this oh, social George, media campaign. Yeah, yeah, it ain't okay, nothing yet, right? George. Don't worry. All I want to say Listen, is... You yeah, don't know if it's reciprocating yet. We're just saying that for the first time I might have fallen in love, but we don't know exactly. Right? All I want to say is... All Samson, I know is that sooner or later... It's coming though, because right. I've realised now it can happen. I won't underestimate feelings because uh, I always brush my side. I, I just I won't meet no one that I like, it, you know. But it'll have, Samson, to if else. it's meant to be for you, it will happen. Mm. This is where I, I, I've always well, said. Well, that changed. Sarah changed. Yeah, it changed upside down for, for me. You. Yeah, yeah. So it does. And some, sometimes in life, mm. I believe you have to lose it all to get, to get it all. It. Yeah. Important. So where I had houses and I mm. thought things was right. I had fuck all. Yeah. And then when I lost it all, yeah, yeah. then I so got it all. The next time. It's so much Because you know what yeah. to do. It's like having a lot of money. Um, one time I was out and I got quite a bit and then it all went. I was giving this one and that one and that one. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh, if I haven't got that bit again and that bit, I know what to do with it next time. So it's all learning curves for me. I mean, you had more that you had. You've I've had plenty, and then that's without nothing. being a criminal. George. Yeah, without being, you yeah. can do that with hard graft and never giving up. Because, like we always say on the MB TV, as many times as I've fallen down, and some of us fall down, a lot of us, quite a few of us, in different ways. Um, the, the the whole purpose, I believe, in life, as long as there's breath and there's air and you're living, that there's you can still get back up and have another go. It can get demoralised and it can get on defeatist. You can start, you know, being um, what's it called? Um, pessimistic um, and start thinking it's never you could be fatalistic but then in the end you say just keep trying keep trying you've got to get it. you've got to get it and then again we say today that hopefully uh, a lot of us as long as it could take for some of us that in the end we finally get the answers to a certain degree um, Samson, we'll be looking for one bit of advice, right? Go on, with this new love of your life. No, ain't yeah. love no. yet, George. It's my. I'm right. saying I'm in love. She's not saying. Well, can I, tell I haven't you asked her if she's in love with me. Whoever you're going to be with, mm. one bit of advice if you want the relationship to last. Go on then, tell me, boy. Don't get undressed with the light on. No. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Samson, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, you too, George. Um, anything you want to say? What about your Mrs. Sarah? Oh, Sarah, I love my Sarah. Oh, she's, yeah. she's, she's top notch. <clears throat> uh, we get on well together, but just really, mm. like, mm. It's, it's not been about crime so much today. No, but it's an insight into it's a different what world. could have been, what might have been, but obviously hard work, George, hard graft, the swinging in roundabouts, she was a little rascal. Was oh, yeah. Was a, oh, you were yeah. just a bit more through done, a bit more well, Kelly just, and a bit more, you know what I mean? You stayed on the fringes of fringes, and dive, that, yeah. which is, if, I wish I would have you, you learned it, but you learn more business-wise with that kind of, so you might have been a little bit of in and out, but still in later life, those skills can still short them show out with being Listen, you straight, never know what's around the man. corner. The thing is, you just have to keep going, mm. keep going. I just, I don't duck and dive. And I just, all I know is I just, I won't do anything illegal ever yeah, but again. you don't have to, I don't have to. No, You don't have no. to. You've no. got a great following here. Yeah. You've got books yeah. coming. You've got bits coming. Yeah, we've got, got more. We've got you other platforms. I mean? But, George, it's been good though, but I'm glad for the Irish lot because I've got to get down. I've been... There's a few that I've really, I've got quite a lot, a few down in um, Ireland, you know, that I have. Some will go down there. Samson, you watch when you go, mm -hmm. yeah? When you mm -hmm. go to Ireland, mm -hmm. you're not going to believe Your bit much. sounds like a bit like, not like the south of France, not glossy or thing like that in that way, but it just found, sounds different to the island that I've heard about, but in the island I've yeah, heard but if about, you're, if, it's more prison-based, so I don't know. If, if you know people in Dublin, you know I mean? in the heart of Dublin, that's mm. like being in the heart of West End, that's like being right. in the heart of Luton. Yeah. When mm. you have the outskirts yeah. and things yeah. like that, it's, it's yeah. listen, one thing about sounds Ireland, beautiful it's a beautiful you know. place, mm. where I live, it's a great place to grow old, everyone looks after yeah. everyone. Yeah. If you get a funeral, you get a massive send off. Mind you, never mind half of them would have put you in the grave talking shite about See what you. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, is it like Coronation Street? Oh, it's, it? oh it is, it's man. It is. It right. is. And you just, me, I just embrace it. I just laugh. Yeah, I like I just, it. I like yeah. it, that community yeah. kind of stuff like that. It's better than down here in the country, so it's much better than London, man. And I don't, I don't go in for all that too much no more. I pop in and pop out of everywhere, me. I've, I've been looking right. to, to, I've been back here now, and it's funny when you leave mm. somewhere, and then come right? Back. And then you come back. Something you realise even more. Yeah. And do you know what I notice? Mm. There's a lot of tenseness around it. Oh, you see cars too... bibbing at each other. No, there's a lot of angry people. Angry well. people. Do you know if you come over to my mm. place, right, mm. okay, and you walk into the shop mm. and there's two women talking, mm. don't you dare turn around and hurry them up and try mm. and make them finish their conversation because no, no. you'll fucking get it yeah, and they really... won't give a fuck about no. how many years you've no, done in jail. I don't, I don't get like that but, anyway. But you know what I mean? Yeah, everyone, pushes finish in front. The... everyone pushes in front of me. It's Off a great place. Way. Samson, it's been a pleasure. Lovely, son. And you, mate. All right. Let's go for something today. Yeah. And um, Uncle Yomi will be up later on, right? We've got this part one out. Um, yeah, buzzing at the moment. But um, it's a pleasure having Uncle George down there. And many more of you, followers and friends, really, now. I've got loads of you. So every story is important to me while we go on this journey. Uh, we learn as we go along communication, engaging, um, the harsh realities, the good bits that come out of bad bits and that kind of stuff. We keep swinging it around this way and that way. But ultimately, we learn more as time goes on. Have a blessed day. I'll be up later on. Sending loads of love. And bye, George.